Hello and welcome to my first ever revision video. We are both here because regular review gets a better grade for you. So let's get started with refraction. You know how tricky spearfishing from above the water can be? Those damn fish are never where they look like they should be. Let's review our ideas about refraction to think about why that is. We see the fish because the light travels from the fish to our eyes. The light is travelling through water here, so it'll be travelling at about 225 million metres per second. And then it will speed up once it's reached this boundary into the air. It will speed up here to around, well just under 300 million metres per second. It's going to be about 90,000 metres per second slower than it would be in a vacuum. But the light is travelling from the fish up through the water. As it hits the air, it speeds up. As it speeds up, you can see here that it's changing direction. So the light is coming up and bending away from the normal. So although this fish is really here, it appears to us as though the fish is here. And that means that when you try and spear it, you're too high and you miss. With practice, you can learn to compensate for refraction and aim lower than the fish. And that way, you might hit your target. So let's concentrate now on how this happens. As the light moves from the water to the air, the density changes from a thousand kilogram per meter cubed to a much less 1.225 kilogram per meter cubed. This change causes the light to speed up. But because the light hits the boundary at an angle to the normal, Here's our angle of incidence here. That means that one side of the light is actually hitting the boundary before the other. In this case, the right side of the light is hitting the boundary first. Now that causes the light to literally skid round in its change of direction. So as the light comes up, it skids and changes direction away from the normal. And this would be our measured angle of refraction. Now, I've drawn my picture really accurately and I used Snell's law to work out the angles mathematically because when you know about things like refractive indices, that's the kind of exciting stuff you can do. But that's a whole future video and it will be about Snell's law. Okay, I think it's time to go and try an experiment. Let's go off to the kitchen. Okay, so Tom, here we are in the kitchen. Have you got your penny? <laughs> right, pop your penny into the green cup. Now, you need to stand so you can see the penny first. That's it. Now move your head back until you cannot see the penny anymore. You there? Right, now with the jug of water, and do not move your head, pour the water in and tell me if you can see the coin appear. Wow! Can oh. you see the coin? There you go. That's an experiment that everyone else could try at home. It works because of refraction. Yeah! You might remember, we did an experiment in class. This is actually two refractions. We've got one here when we go from air to glass, and a second refraction here when we go from glass to air. So we've got the lights coming fast, slowing down, and speeding up again. We've got the light coming fast, when it hits the boundary, changing direction towards the normal, it's slowing down. And then this bit is like we've been looking at with the fish. The light is travelling slowly at the boundary, it can speed up, and this causes it to change direction away from the normal. Just like we looked at with the fish. What about the other way around then, and how the fish sees us? Here we've got a refraction of light as it's moving from air into the water. This time we've got the light travelling fast and then slowing down. As the light hits the boundary, the left hand side of the light is hitting first. And so the skid is caused towards that normal line. So the fish thinks you are higher than you really are, because really you're there. You might also remember from lessons that we had a go at shining the light straight down the normal line at 90 degrees to the surface. Here, the light still changes speed, it's going fast, slow, fast, but this time, because both sides of the beam are hitting the boundary together, there's no skid, there's no change of direction. 
That would be like we're looking directly down at the fish. So where is refraction actually useful? Oh! Spectacles! Lenses, especially cut pieces of glass that use refraction, let's find out how. Some lenses bring the light together, they converge the light. This is a convex lens bringing the light together to a focal point. Other lenses, cut differently, are concave lenses and these lenses spread the light out. We call that diverging the light. Okay, let's start wrapping this up. I think it's important to point out that it's not only visible light that behaves in this way at a boundary between two different materials. All of the electromagnetic waves can be refracted, as can sound. Now, refraction of sound isn't an important phenomena, but longitudinal waves, as well as transverse waves, can be refracted. In fact, when we think about both types of waves, we can think about seismic waves. And it's because of the refraction of the P and S waves that they travel through the Earth in the way that they do here. But it's water waves that sometimes throw students in exams. So we're going to finish with an application from the most recent Edexcel exam. You're told in this question that the wave will move slower in the shallow water. You also are told in the question that the frequency is constant. So we need to apply the relevant formula. If we think about the formula, if the speed is going down but the frequency cannot change, then the wavelength has to go down as well. The wavelength has to get shorter as the speed decreases. Putting that all together, we can form our answer. So as the wave is moving from the deep water to the shallow water, the wave is getting slower, just like when the light moved from air to water or how the fish sees you. The wave is going to slow down and it's going to change direction. The wave front here is coming in at an angle to the normal. So the light is going to bend towards the normal and as it does so, the wavelength is going to get shorter so the peaks will get closer together. And all of that happens because the right side of the wave is hitting the boundary first. Here's your challenge. If it says you may add to the diagram, there is no may about it. Do it. So have a go. Download this question. It's the 2016 P1 Higher paper from Edexcel. And I will reveal the answer next time so that you can check yours. A couple of thank yous. First of all, to Tom. I could never have made this without Tom's encouragement and his expertise. So thanks Tom. I'd also like to say a thank you to Maddie Moat who gave me that final push I needed by inspiring me at her talk on Saturday which was part of the Norwich Science Festival. Now it's over to you. If you want more videos, smash the like button. What do you want me to review next? Leave a comment. And subscribe for more. Because regular, regular review, review gets a better, better grade for you. you.